Shopify has just released a pretty big update on how color filters work across all themes. If your store already had plain text color filters and you wanna have swatches, then this is the video for you. You'll finally be able to set that up on Dawn and on free themes and on any other premium theme as well. Or if it's your first time setting up color filters on Shopify, then you're in luck because it just got a lot easier and the method I'll be showing you today is the new and improved way that people will be using from 2024 onwards. There used to be a lot of different ways to set up color filters depending on the theme you're using, but now this is gonna be one standardized way, which is great, because whether you update your theme or whether you switch to a different theme, you won't have to set up your color filters from scratch. This one method is just gonna be compatible with every theme now. Now, this update allows you to use hex color codes for your color swatches, of course, but you can also add images so that you can show patterns or the texture of a fabric. Another benefit of this update is that it doesn't matter whether you're using color variants or if you've split your colors into a separate product for each color. It'll work either way. And also if you have lots of shades of a color or fancy sounding color names like royal blue or ocean blue, then you'll be able to group these all into one blue color filter. All right, now there are a couple of requirements before we begin. The first is that you're using a theme that is compatible with the latest updates, which means that your theme version was released after December 2023. If you're using Dawn or any of the free themes, then that will be version 12. If you're using a premium theme, then just make sure you update to the latest version if possible, or that the version you're on was released after December 2023. For most of you, updating should be pretty easy, just a couple of clicks. But if you've made a lot of code changes to your store, it might be a bit more complex. If you're looking for a guide on updating your theme, I've already made a video on that, and you'll find that in the video description. Now, the second thing you need is the search and discovery app, which I think should be installed by default on your store. If not, just go to apps and search for search and discovery. Now, let me introduce you to my store. This is running on Dawn theme version 12. We're gonna be adding the filters in the sidebar here. And you'll notice that I have some products set up here. And this beanie, for example, here I've got it set up as a different product for every color. Some of you may be setting up your products this way, and some of you may be using color variants. So on this product, I've got the four different colors as variants in the one product. Now, first I'm gonna show you the old way of adding filters because it'll be a useful comparison. So I've clicked add a filter and the most simple way to set up a color filter is to go under here, product options, and we have color. Okay, so this is taking from the actual product variants that we've set up. So size, I have this on some products and I have color on those beanie products, the color variants I showed you. We'll select color and that's all there is to it as you can see, it imports some of the colors from my various products that have color variants. And a lot of them may overlap. So we have, for example, navy and we have blue ridge. These are both blues. So what I can do is create a group and I will call this filter blue. And then when I click blue in the filters, it will show products that have the blue ridge or the navy color variants. I can do the same thing for these, for example, I will make these a group called orange, okay? And you can do the same thing with the method I'm about to show you. This ability to create grouped values isn't going anywhere. It's still a very useful thing you can do, but you probably won't need it. So now that I've saved this, we can go back to all the filters and I'm gonna drag color right up to the top here. And here we go. I waited about 30 seconds and then after refreshing, I can see my color filters here. Now, the downside of this type of filter is that it works off color variants, doesn't it? It works only on products that have color variants. So when I filter by blue, this is the only product that's gonna be visible, okay? That one with color variants. None of these are gonna show up because this product, these products don't have color variants. It's just a product with one color and it's blue, but this kind of filter doesn't recognize that. There was a way to solve this problem and that's by using meta fields. So this is the second strategy of adding color filters. And even if you're going for the color swatches, I recommend listening to this because it'll help you understand the more advanced method with the color swatches because we're gonna be using meta fields and meta objects. Now, if you're new to meta fields, there are a way to add extra information about a product. So for example, ingredients, 
that might go on a food product. And we can set up these meta fields ourselves. I could set up a color meta field for this product and add the text blue and then base a filter on that meta field. So let's go to settings. Now go to custom data. This is where you set up meta fields. We're gonna add it to a product and click add definition to define a new meta field. Name it color and the type is going to be single line text and it's going to be a list of values because products can have more than one color like for example our beanie product with different color variants so let's save that now when we go to the bucket hat product page at the bottom we'll see our new meta field and we're going to add blue and save now if we go back to our search and discovery app to create our filters i'll add a filter and the source is going to be that new color meta field we created. And you can see that it immediately pulls in the value blue. So let's save that. I've actually named it color meta field in brackets so that we can see it easily on the website. And so here we see our new filter. And when I click blue, we see our bucket hat. And this method is gonna work for the beanie with color variants also. All I need to do is add all those different colors inside of that meta field. So down here in color, I'm going to add blue, orange, green, gray, and hit save. So we have four values here, refresh. And now under this filter, if we hit blue, we have both of these products. The one with just a blue product and the one where blue is one of its variants. So that is the second method. Obviously the downside is that we still have just plain text. So yeah, the problem with both these methods is that there's no way that we can really tie, you know, a hex code or an image to any one of these colors. They're just plain text, okay? And that's where meta objects come in. If you haven't used meta objects before, this is gonna be a good introduction. Here's a quick preview of what our meta objects will look like. So we have a list of colors here, but rather than just the color name, we can go inside here and we see some information about this color. We have the name, the actual hex code of the color and optionally you can also add an image and that's going to override the hex code so it will use the image instead that's if you want to show the texture of the fabric or if you have a pattern then after setting up all the colors used in your store you will be able to assign these colors to your products if that sounds a bit confusing it'll all make sense once we go through this together hey guys it's ed from the future here just to say that about a week after i recorded this tutorial shopify updated the look of their meta object pages, but this tutorial still works. You can still follow it, just looks a little bit different, that's all. Okay, I've just deleted what I just showed you so we can start from scratch. So go to settings again and go to custom data. This time, instead of meta fields, scroll a bit lower and you'll find meta objects. Add a definition and we're just gonna call this meta object color. And we're gonna add three fields. The first one is gonna be single line text and it's the color name, very simple. The second one is going to be the actual color hex code. And for that, we want to choose the color type. And we're going to call this hex code or, you know, whatever makes sense to you. You can name them however you want. Add. And then the third one is going to be file because we want to add an image. So let's add that. And after we've defined our color meta object, we can save. Now in your Shopify admin sidebar, go to content meta objects and these are just some meta objects I've set up from previous tutorials but here you can filter to color so that you only see color meta objects and here we can add an entry and this will be a new color so I'm going to say blue now here for the hex code if you already know the specific color that your brand uses then you can use that here if you don't then you can choose from the color picker like this but I don't recommend it because it's quite likely that you're gonna choose a pretty ugly color that won't look nice with the other colors. So if I go yellow, look, that's, that's a terrible ugly yellow, right? So I recommend actually using various online color palettes like this one, for example, material UI colors. I'll put the link in the description to a few different color palettes that you can use. And then you just get some nice generic colors like this blue, it's a nice blue. So I'm gonna grab this blue and paste this hex code here. And for now, I'm not using the image because I'll show you that later. Now save and we've added an entry for blue. Now I'm gonna add a few more colors. 
and then we can assign these colors to products. Now that I have my list of colors, we're gonna go ahead and create meta fields for products, much like the method that I showed you earlier, where we had color and we write the word blue, except here, rather than writing the word blue, we're gonna link to these meta objects that we just created. So let's go into settings, custom data, products, and we're going to define another meta field. This one, I think I'll call it color filter swatch, okay? so that it's just clear to us, but you can call it color if you want. It's just that I've got a few different meta fields going on right now for this tutorial. And here's the thing now, the type is not gonna be single line text, it's not gonna be color. It's actually gonna be a meta object. You select which meta object you want. I've got a few, you should probably only have color, the one that we created. And because I have some products with more than one color, like that beanie with different color variants, or maybe it could even be just one pair of sneakers, but the sneakers are, you know, black and red, right? So you wanna have them under both the black and the red filter. So we're gonna have a list of entries. So we can select more than one color for each product. Hit save. And now when we go back to our product page, we will have that new meta field, the color filter swatch, click on it and you'll be able to select from your list of colors that you defined using meta objects. So here I'm simply going to select blue. And as for the beanie that's using color variants, as I showed you before with the color meta field, we typed various colors. Here we're going to select the various colors that apply. So we're gonna select orange, gray, green, and blue. The green, I know this product, it's actually teal, but I want this to be in the filter category of green if that makes sense. I don't wanna make a whole category for teal. Let's save that. And then the final step before we can actually see this appear on our website is to create the actual filter using our search and discovery app. So here we're gonna add a filter. And again, like with the meta field filter, you'll find it under product meta fields. Here we have color filter swatch, and it's a type of meta object. You can see that by this. This, I guess it looks like Lego. And here's the interesting thing. This is the new Shopify update that we can see here. We have display type swatch, okay? And inside of this swatch, we can select how it's displayed. So let's, let's just hit edit on this so that we can go through it. The label, the way it's displayed is it's using the name value. That's the only option. Then the swatch is going to be the hex code value that we defined. And then there is a swatch override, which is interesting. So what this is saying is that if you upload an image, then that's gonna override the hex code. And I'll show that in action a little bit later. So I haven't made any edits. This is just how it is by default. And we see our values here. This is what's gonna show up in the filter and save. And so here we are. Finally, we have color filter swatches on Dawn theme. It's quite simple. It works pretty much the same way as the meta field method except thanks to meta objects, we have a bit more information about each color. And the last thing I wanna demonstrate is how the images work for these swatches. So let's say that for our green here, we actually wanna show what the green exactly looks like. So I've just used preview on Mac to grab a little square of this beanie. Whatever program you use, it doesn't matter as long as it can crop and just make sure it's larger than say 50 pixels across. Maybe something like that is a minimum. It actually doesn't matter what you name it. It used to matter because different themes used to pull in those color filter images in different ways. But now because we're just adding it inside of the meta object, it doesn't matter what you name it. Next hit select image and upload your image. I've already uploaded it here, done hit save and you'll see that this green is actually going to override the hex code and we're going to see that image instead. So there we go, there's our green and if I zoom in you can even see the texture a little bit. If you're using a different theme that has slightly larger swatches then you'll really be able to see that texture quite nicely and I think it's quite a beautiful effect. That's all for today's video. If you found it useful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for another video and I'll see you next time.